first, type in the winning combo on row 10 on the clusters tab. Then select cells A10 all the way down to G as in golf, 321. Copy and paste it in cell A11. Delete the winning combo from row 10. Delete the extra red rectangle that was copied and pasted. It should look like this when you're done. Go to the Mega Ball or Powerball tab and hit Control C to copy the selected area. Go to the Display tab for Mega Ball or Powerball and paste special values in cell B4. Sort the selected data by column R, the power ranking column, largest to smallest. This is what it should look at like when you're finished. Power ranking going down. Same thing for the pick five tab. Control C, copy the selected data. Go to the display tab, display P5 tab, and special paste values in cell B4. Then sort data by column R, the power ranking column, from largest to smallest. This is what it should look like when finished. Power ranking highest descending. Every tab is now updated. You just have to move the pointers around for website page cheat sheet info. Same applies to the pattern tab where like this example double 40s hit. So I adjust my personal markers for info on the website. So everything is done and it's ready to go. How do you know which Mega Ball or Power Ball to play? Well, let's go all the way over to the right and first understand that A through E basically hit within a three to five drawing ratio. E, F, G, and H are within a seven drawing ratio and Z is anything after 50 drawings. You can see that A through D hits the most. So I give preference to any length from A to E looking at the grade length. And you'll see right here that four is the highest, but that's a Z for length. So we'll disregard this at this point, bring it back down to three being the highest. So nine, three would be up at the top of my choices Coming down, there's a 5-3, and then there's a 4-3 with an overdue row with the green background right there. I can also go to the grade length column, and you'll see that the green background that's favorable is for a Z grade. So I'll jump to the next one, which in this case is dark gray, and start looking at the order I want to place those in. Over to the left side of the page, you will see that for grades A through E, I'll look for those yellow highlights or those blue highlights for A through E. So there's a D there. So that gives a little favor to number 17. As I come down, there's highlights for F and for Zs. I'll, I'll disregard them. There's one for the length of B. So again, I'll look at the number 13 there and give it a a little favorable tap. Also, in the column for overdue, that 3-0 and 3-4 right there, I'll look at it as respectable, but only for the 3-4 for that A, which is number 8. 
Obviously, the, the color, background color for grade and length uh, here, I'll see a, a dark length of C for the, the top number, 1. And I'll go down and consider like 8 and 9 and 2 and 3 and 7 and down to the 5, all with the darker colors, basically indicating a more favorable gray length. And when I say dark, I mean dark gray because there aren't no yellow, greens, or blues there. Part two, let's look at the numbers through its sequence. Okay, sequence timing, you can see basically in row T, uh, the top number 210 is its sequence. Okay, we go over and you see that gets a 4.7, which is the highest sequence uh, on the table currently. And that also gives it a value of 9, which is the highest value under sequence timing. That sequence timing and the database uh, grade length all get combined together in a formula to produce column BB, where you'll see that that first row has an $11 advantage. <laughs> okay, I just put it in terms of dollars since I bet it on inner tops. But that gives you an idea of a combined grade length sequence timing of which ones are preferred. Part three, lengths of F, G, and H. Take the number 24, we have a grade D zero F. So F basically is giving us a sequence timing of three with a grade length of two, which actually is, is pretty good uh, compared to everything else. But at the same time, you gotta understand that it's allowed seven to eight drawings to get that grade length sequence timing, whereas A through E, is between three or four drawings. So that's why you give those things half measures when you look at them. So even though this is a, a $4 uh, in the uh, uh, column BB with a three in column DE, D, e, the Powerball, Omega Ball column, it, it's still, like I said, is given a half measure weight uh, compared to a, a four, three, if it was uh, a great a length of A to E. Part five, the length Z. Don't let that fool you, even though it looks better than the F through H. It's basically uh, anything that hits after 52 drawings. So it looks better because we count all the hits, even if it takes 100 drawings to hit it. Because of that, Zs are highlighted in column N, so I can pay attention to it. And when I go over to column A, you can see that I have a formula that shows you when a length of Z is considered peaking and when it is dead. So right here, 16 looks like it might be peaking, whereas 10 is look like it's dead. Why is that? Because 10 basically hasn't hit in 100 drawings which is way out of proportion and it might hit soon, but it's dead because it's not worth wasting money on chasing it. Okay. Whereas 79 drawings is pretty much, uh, from 72 to 79, like you'll see up here, there's 76 and it also has a gray in that area for six that might be peaking. But again, I consider these numbers due that it might be peaking, but I'm not going to play them. Uh, versus anything in A through E, okay? That's why you'll see over here in the PBMB column, there are purple backgrounds. That's to let me know that those are basically uh, not to be compared when considering grade length and sequence timing. So the number six, it has the B0Z, which has a purple background over there, but a nine in the BB column, nine dollar in the BB column, along with a six four sequence timing database, which is really good. And when I go over, I can also see that, like I said, it's peaking and 
it, it, it had the bright blue in column C. So it's the best of the length Z's with a sequence of 300, 300, as you can see in column T. And the sequence of 300 normally hits between 60 and 70, with 76 being an outlier, which is where it's, where it's at right now, 76. Okay, so that, that peak is only going to last for a couple drawings. So some of these numbers hit when they peak, some hit after they peak. For example, number seven, it peaked in drawings previously. It started coming down in that last two drawings, and then seven hit. So again, that's why I monitored the last five drawings to watch numbers that are also, you know, past their peak. They may still hit. Five is on there. There's one coming down that's been there for a while. If you're going to monitor this too, then what you need to do is copy the four column, move them over. So using the metrics I've given, this is the order I would put uh, the ones that are highlighted with, with an orange background are either repeaters or they're due. So basically they can be listed separately. For example, if I did best grades, I would say one, five, nine, three, twenty, because my number one pick for repeaters would be eight, two. And my number one pick for do would be six. Work with that for now. More to come.